Today's video is about fall care and pruning of knockout roses. What should your fall cleanup look like? And do you prune knockout roses in the fall or in the spring? I'm Laura from Garden Sanity, and I want to remove any anxiety you may have about your knockouts and their fall care. So let's get started. Whenever handling your knockout roses or any roses, even sharp plants like yuccas, use a pair of these rose pruning gloves or something similar. These types of gloves are very heavy duty and they'll protect you from thorns. I'll put a link to these in the description area below. A pair of hand pruners is essential. I like to use these from Fiskars. They don't sponsor this, I just happen to like them very much. To get down close to the ground easily, I rely on my favorite garden kneeler bench, which has helped me ever since I started using it when recovering from my double hip replacement. This garden kneeler is a game changer. Neem oil, like what can be found in most 3-in-1 organic products, is a really good idea to use when you're doing your fall cleanup. I'll explain this in a few minutes, and you'll see why I use it every fall. Actually, I use this year-round, so I'll explain that all in a few minutes. Should you prune in the fall or the spring? This is a good question, and you'll find gardeners that prefer one season over the other. I used to prune my knockouts in the fall. However, last year I waited and I pruned my roses in the spring. Now I prefer it instead. But there really is no difference to pruning results in fall versus spring. However, it is actually easier to prune your roses in the spring. Why? Well, there's two reasons. First, you can prune your knockout roses when you begin to see buds on the shrubs in the spring. And these buds will help you to see exactly where to prune. Also, you're gonna have a much better sense of any stems or branches that are dead and should be removed. But pruning in the fall has its advantages too, including having it checked off your list, which will be one less chore to do next spring. If you live in an area where there's heavy snow and that could damage the branches, that's also a reason to prune in the fall. One negative that you gotta be aware of is that if you're gonna prune in the fall, that you don't prune too soon while it's warm out because any new fall growth will end up dying off and it'll also confuse the plant a bit. So you can avoid this by pruning in late fall. Other than that, there really isn't much difference in terms of the end result. Bloom time is still the same. What I would suggest if you decide to prune in the fall is next spring, still take a look at your knockouts closely in case there are branches that died during the winter. Again, this is easy to spot as the new growth will begin to emerge. So whether you prune in the fall or the spring ends up mostly being up to you. If you live in an area with a colder zone, harsh winters, lots of snow, and you feel more comfortable pruning in the fall, go for it. If you'd rather wait till the spring, you can do that too. Either way, I have you covered because I have a complete video, nothing but pruning. And I'll link to that above. I'll link to it in the description area below this video. I'll show you how, why, and when to prune. And again, pruning can be either fall or spring. And by fall, I mean late fall. Spring, I mean early spring. I use examples from my own gardens and it's a very popular video. It should help answer all your questions and show you exactly what to prune. And I mean, I get very specific. So I hope you'll watch that video. So now let's go over some other aspects of fall care. So the first step is to assess the shrub. And I know that sounds kind of fancy. Assess the shrub. <laughs> but really, it's just to get a good look at your shrub or shrubs. In this case, I've got two right here. I did have a third. And if you've watched previous videos, it ends up that this third one that I did wonder if it had rose rosette disease, did in fact, and so it was removed. And I replaced it with a Mr. Bowling Ball Arborvitae, which looks so cute. I digress. So the reason you want to kind of get a sense of what your shrub is looking like is that even if you're not gonna prune in the fall, and I'm not, for example, I'm still going to do a little bit of trimming up and tidying up. Now, here's a good example right here, these low hanging branches. You see how far this comes out? I'm going to trim this one back all the way to right where the edging is. And there's a few that are like this one. The other thing I'm gonna do is trim away some of this growth at the base of the plant. I'm also gonna do that with these guys here. I'm gonna take this guy off and I'm gonna take this guy off. And I think I'm gonna even take this guy off. That's just gonna make it a little bit nicer and a little bit more open right here. So in addition to taking off some of the bottom just to give it a little bit more air circulation and just clean it up and tidy it up a little bit, I'm also noticing, you know, there's a couple of branches that are also kind of heavy and jutting out that I could leave these until the spring, but if I just want to neaten it up a little bit, I might take this heavy one off. If I trim a little bit back, take that one off, and I'll 
take this one off. Again, I'm not really concerned about where I'm cutting because this isn't a full official pruning. I'm just tidying this up a little bit, making a little bit, look a little bit more uniform. This guy, he's coming out a little bit. Take him off a little bit. This guy's jutting out a little bit. I think I will take him off a little bit. You know, it just kind of neatens it up. This guy's out a little bit. Just sort of nothing fancy, but make it a little bit more of a nice curve rather than, you know, a little less sloppy. In fact, if you wanted to, you could even take this down about a foot. And again, I wouldn't normally do it right now. It's here in Zone 7 Southern New Jersey. It's only towards the end of October. And that to me is too early in this area. It may not be if you live in a colder zone, a more Northern zone. So definitely you gotta judge it by what zone you're in. And if you're not sure, my best advice is to go to your local garden nursery expert and ask them because no doubt they have knockout roses they're gonna best advise you as to when is a good time to prune if you wanna prune them in the fall. So the next step is to trim back any diseased or damaged leaves and stems. Whether it's from black spot or otherwise, you need to remove any diseased leaves from your shrub. I have a video devoted to black spot on knockout roses, which I'll link to in the description area below. In that video, I discuss and demonstrate how to treat black spot in three easy steps plus share additional solutions that help prevent black spot from taking over your knockout roses. Using examples, again, from here in my own gardens. So please watch that video, it's really helpful. The third step is to clean up underneath the shrub. Remove all fallen leaves and debris from the ground around the rose bush. It's best to keep the ground around your roses clean and tidy, especially during the winter season. And remove any weeds as well, of course. You can use your gloved hands, a small hand claw or rake, or whatever is easiest for you to really get underneath and clean. The next step after you've cleaned up your shrub is to use neem oil. Most of the time you're gonna find neem oil, hopefully you'll find neem oil in a three-in-one product, which is a fungicide, miticide, and insecticide. Neem oil is really good as it helps to just kinda kill off anything that might be remaining on the shrub that's bad. So what I suggest is whether you're doing a fall pruning or you're tidying up like I am. Either way, this applies. You can spray the shrub, spray what's pruned, and also go underneath, and once you've cleaned underneath, spray the ground around the rose bush as well. And that's so any spores that might still be on the ground from black spot, this is gonna kill that off, or at least it'll help to kill it off. You'll have a much better chance of next spring not having all of that come back. So, little tip. It's optional, but I think it's really helpful. So you see what I have down here is shredded bark mulch. And some of it is worn away. Some of it I just tossed when I was tossing away the black spot leaves and whatever was underneath it as I was cleaning up. So I definitely need to put more mulch down. And what mulch does is it helps protect the soil. What you don't wanna have happen to your soil is you don't want it to alternate between thawing and freezing all season long because that's gonna mess with the roots. That's what sometimes causes what's called heaving. If you've ever seen a shrub, and this actually happened to me a couple years ago with a little small arborvitae I had up in the center bed, is by the time the spring rolled around, the shrub looked like it was coming out of the ground. And that was because of the alternate thawing and freezing. There wasn't as much mulch around it as there should have been. And I actually lost the shrub because it, it didn't survive. The roots started to become exposed and they just froze and died. Long way of digressing that you do wanna put a good coat of mulch down around your rose bed. That could mean different things to different people. Some people use shredded bark like we do. Some people use pine bark mulch, which is what I use in my backyard beds. I've seen hay, I've seen shredded leaves. Actually, that's a really good organic natural compost is to take all the fall leaves, shred them up and put them underneath your beds. It's an organic mulch that'll really enrich the soil. You're lucky if you live in a harsher climate where you're gonna get a lot of snow and snow that stays on the ground because snow that stays on the ground actually is a good protector of the soil. It actually insulates the soil. Unfortunately, I just saw the forecast for the winter here. We're gonna have another warmer and wet winter. There's not much snow predicted and I wish we would have that because I actually missed that. Years ago, we had some good snows here one winter and my shrubs did wonderfully well. I know there are those of you that hate snow, but it does have some good properties. So just things to keep in mind. You wanna make sure the soil's protected around your rose shrubs. So mulch, mulch, mulch. 
if you live in a very cold climate where the winds can be very drying to your shrub, you might want to protect it with burlap. That's what's actually suggested by the company that makes knockout roses. And they say to wrap the base of your shrub in burlap for the winter, and then you can unwrap it in the springtime, should be fine. If you have rabbit or deer problems, that's another thing to think about. I use Repelzol that I sprinkle around the base of the rose bushes. That seems to help. I did have some rabbit damage last year, which I'll show you now here on the screen. It wasn't much, and it was only on one of these shrubs, surprisingly enough, but I am gonna try to be more active during the winter time, get my butt out here in the cold, and put the repels all around. There's, of course, liquid fence you can use as well if you have deer and rabbits. There's all kinds of products out there. A lot of times it's a matter of mixing and matching, trial and error. Hopefully something will work. Another thing you can do is you can buy some chicken wire and put it around your shrubs, around the base temporarily. You could also buy some tree protectors that are larger and you could put those around the base as well. So those are all options that you can do. Do not fertilize at all. I don't want you to fertilize. If you were watching my pruning video, which I referred you to do, whether you prune in fall or spring, that pruning video is perfect for you tells you exactly what to do. However, one of the things it says to do is after you're done pruning, then you fertilize. That's if you're pruning in the spring. So if you're pruning in the fall, don't fertilize. You don't want to encourage the plant to grow at all. You want the plant to hibernate like a bear. You want it to go to sleep. And then in the springtime, that's the time to apply some rose tone, which is the fertilizer I like to use. It's a slow release organic fertilizer. That's when you do it. So the last thing to talk about is deadheading and it's not something that you necessarily have to do. It's something I like to do. As you can see, I've gotten a little lax with it. You can continue to deadhead. It is kind of therapeutic and relaxing and it does tidy up the shrub. So I may do this once or twice more. It is the end of October here in zone seven, Southern New Jersey. I did this one year. I kept the blooms going until Thanksgiving. It's a challenge now that I'm thinking about it. I may do it again. I deadhead in a super easy way. There's nothing fancy about it. So if you want to learn how to do that, it's super easy. So we covered a lot from tidying up to pruning to cleaning underneath, spraying neem oil, spraying neem oil around the ground, mulching. We covered a lot. So until next time, happy gardening.